So I was recently with a really big group of teachers and I told a story about being a very young teacher and kind of screwing up. I, I had a student who just kept falling asleep in the same class period and I didn't really know this girl very well and I just thought she was being lazy. I thought she was being rude for sleeping in my class and told, so I told these teachers about how I went up to that student and I rudely woke her up and I kind of called her out in front of everyone and I said something like, this isn't nap time, this is English class, I need you to wake up. And so I told this story and then I told the part about afterwards where I found out that this student was coming from a really difficult home situation. She literally raises her two little sisters and has a dad who works third shift and doesn't have a mom and, and this girl was literally working second shift as a 14 year old, a, a mom to her little sisters, the, the caretaker to them, but then also was going to school full time and that's why she was tired. And so I shared this story and gave a little bit more detail than that. But when I got done, I had teacher after teacher after teacher come up to me and talk about that same student in their own class. The ones who, who might be acting in a way that could be con contrived as, negative behavior or you know just being obstinate or rude or apathetic or whatever it is and then just sharing story after story about how they found out that those students had so much more going on beneath the surface i heard this all over and i had several teachers come up and say i was that kid they said i was the kid who's doing so much at home but then also trying to go to school and how it was often mistaken for just being rude and bad behavior and and there was so much more going on and so i just heard this over and over which really kind of left me with two big takeaways one our students are not blank slates this just reaffirms to me that it's a pretty common thing to have students who have so much more going on beneath the surface. I know it's cliche, but it's like they're icebergs and you only see so much, but there's so much more going on at home. You know, it's, it's like students are characters within stories and the stories that they live often have very real conflict. Sometimes the conflict can be traumatic, like that student who I shared with everyone about. Sometimes the conflict is just being a kid in the 21st century, but regardless, they're not blank slates ready to just absorb whatever content and information and skills we have for them. It's it, instead, we have to, as educators, enter their lives with this understanding that there is always an explanation for student behavior. And this doesn't necessarily excuse negative behavior by any means. We have to learn accountability and students have to learn to take accountability. And yet it does always explain it. There, there's no way around it. There is always a reason students act the way that they do. And so that was one of my big takeaways is like this point I'm trying to make in the story just seems to be true across the board because I heard so many people tell me their own version of it. Um, but my other takeaway was this fact that we are not alone in the difficult stories that we hold as educators. We all have these experiences with students that sometimes break our hearts, sometimes frustrate us, sometimes enlighten us and illuminate things that we're feeling. We all are, are, are going through similar things. And when, and when I have something like this where you know I share a point and then other people are telling me how that point is true in their own lives, this just reminds me that the education community really is a community if we allow it to be. You know, like I, I think sometimes being a teacher, being any type of educator can be really isolating, which is surprising to anybody who doesn't work in schools because they're like, wait a minute, aren't you with hundreds of kids a day, right? Like, you know, I, I, I once taught 180 students every single day. So, you know, it's, the sentiment might be like, well, don't you just aren't you always with people? Aren't you always with kids? And it's like, well, yeah, I'm with kids, but that's kind of a one-way street as far as who we pour into. Um, and yet, you know, how many times have you gone an entire week without talking to another educator the whole time? Or maybe it's just a smile in the hallway or a quick moment in the staff lounge. But for the most part, educating can be quite isolating. And yet, if you work in a school, you are working with other people who have similar stories and similar experiences and similar frustrations. And, and to me, as I had all of these people confirming 
this point I was trying to make, this, this experience I was just sharing about, it was just a reminder that we have to lean in on each other. We have to realize that we are not doing this work alone. We're doing it with other people who are also in those trenches, who are also, you know, maybe struggling through the challenges, but then also learning from them. And, and I think uh, we, we just have to do more and more and more of that because these challenges aren't necessarily going away. You know, hopefully uh, the, the ones we've experienced in the last couple of years are minimized and not as, as severe as they have been. But the, the nature of being an educator is that you are working in a very complex situation all the time. You are working with students, with complex stories and a system that is complex. And, and we just can't do that alone. And so uh, I guess as, as we think about students like the one I shared about, who, who had just a really difficult upbringing and a difficult, difficult home life. And, and as educators, as teachers, we're being invited into those. I think we have to ask how can we support them and how can we support each other as we're doing that very important work. So anyway, if you're doing that very important work, thank you, thank you, thank you. We need more of you.